Uh, hope you're all doing well. Uh, my name is Nasser Lehlal. And uh, I'm here to talk to you about uh, a small, a very tiny project that um, I did using uh, machine learning. Um, and it does uh, flower identification. So <clears throat> before I actually get into the details, I uh, started uh, getting into machine learning about a year ago, uh, maybe a bit less. And uh, it's uh, intriguing, of course. And there's a lot of, uh, it's been in, let's say the news, it's been in uh, education, it's been everywhere, really, uh, machine learning, AI, it's everywhere. Um, and it, it's, there's been this stigma around machine learning and AI that it's very complicated and that it's very hard to understand or grasp or even work on, that you probably need a PhD degree or a master's degree. Uh, or you need to be an expert in some kind of language or, or something else. However, during my, my, my search and my, let's say, my, my uh, journey into this, um, I've learned quite a bit <clears throat> about machine learning. And uh, after creating this project, uh, I've had ready to share. So uh, without further ado, the... Uh, the, the app, or I'll call it an app, the app that I, that I uh, worked on is a flower classifier. And it can classify between five different types of flowers, daisies, dandelions, roses, uh, sunflower, and tulips. Um, and it's very simple. There's an upload button and a classify button. Uh, really, really easy uh, to use. You click the upload, you choose the picture, you press cl classify, and you get a result. So this is on the right here, you'll see a, a picture of uh, some people holding a phone, taking a selfie with flowers in the background. And it shows that the prediction that the flowers in the picture are tulips and it's 94.01% sure. And to be honest, that's very impressive uh, that, the, uh, that the model can actually identify uh, from this picture that the flowers in this photo uh, are tulips, that these are the, the flowers are, are tulips. So how, uh, I'll go through the source code and then share with you the link at the, at the very end. So what is machine learning? Um, basically Wikipedia's uh, definition is really simple. So machine learning is the study of computer algorithms that improve automatically through experience and by the use of data. So uh, that is, seems quite simple, right? But machine, machines, I mean, they improve automatically. What does that actually mean? What does automatically mean? Uh, and through experience, I mean, uh, applications or computers or code, can get experience, there must be more to it, right? So machine learning is actually a simple process of repetition, the way that the algorithms work. It's a repetitive process where you have inputs and parameters, right? So the inputs, let's say, if we use the flower example, these are the, the photos themselves, the uh, tags, or let's say the, uh, uh, the names of each flower. So a photo of uh, a daisy in, uh, is related to the name itself, daisy, for example. A photo of a rose is related to uh, the name rose. So these are uh, inputs, and then we have parameters that go into the architecture of the uh, machine learning. Now in architecture, uh, I'm not going to explain anything about it. I'm just going to say that it's not that hard to understand. Uh, but it, I mean, explaining it takes a while. And uh, it's not, uh, uh, we don't have really much time for that. And then uh, after it goes through the architecture, uh, it uh, produces predictions, right? And based on these predictions, it calculates the loss value. 
and you uh, based on, of course, the labels, right? So it sees that, for example, Daisy uh, uh, and this image uh, does matches this data set with a certain percentage. And then it goes uh, and, and iterates over this process over and over again until it gets better and better in understanding it. So it's uh, uh, fairly simple, you'd say. So in, in the flower identification uh, app, uh, the input data set was not very big, as you saw on the screenshot. The data set was actually uh, obtained from a website called Kaggle. And the data set contained uh, 769 daisy images, 1,000 dandelion images, and about 700 rose images, sunflower, and then about 983 tulip photos. These are some of the photos that were in the data set. As you can see, um, they're, they don't have to be accurate, uh, extremely accurate. They don't have to be from a certain angle. They don't have to be, you know, uh, uh, you know represented in a, any uh, special way. But the more varied the photos that you have, the better the results, of course. Now, <clears throat> So setting up the data set, uh, before I get into uh, uh, this uh, uh, exactly, the, um, the, uh, the code um, was written in uh, Python using Py uh, Python uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, you can, uh, there's also support for uh, notebooks and uh, VS Code. If you have VS Code, you can uh, open up a notebook and start coding. So, um, Basically, uh, what I used is a library called FastAI, and uh, FastAI makes working with ML really, really easy, and they have uh, an excellent online uh, course for machine learning as well. So the first thing we do is we set up the data set. We tell basically the, uh, we tell the, uh, the computer, the code, uh, or the model that we have a uh, data block, which is a, a flower uh, data block which is, com which is um, made up of images, where it says image block and category block, which is the uh, labels, right? And then it uses a 20% of the data where it says valid PCT, that's 20% of the data for, for validation, where uh, if you remember the, uh, the algorithm, uh, it's the last part where uh, it checks for uh, validation and then reiterates. So <clears throat> we uh, define the data block. After we define the data block, we uh, do checking and parameterization. Basically, we uh, uh, take a look at our sample data, make sure that you know we have correct identifiers, um, something like that. We identify the transformation as well. In machine learning, especially when it comes to images, um, we apply transformation for standardization. So for example, if we have lots of images that are different uh, dimensions or different uh, scales, uh, we standardize them into a very basic uh, size and shape, even do sometimes do augmented transformations, which is uh, skewing the image, uh, reversing it, uh, cropping it, things like this. And most of this is because um, to provide a standard for the uh, for the model, um, as well as allowing for, uh, uh, let's say, a, a standard shape uh, of the data itself. Then we can uh, run the training uh, using a simple one, uh, two lines. And you can see on the left, uh, the table shows the uh, epoch, which is the iteration, and then the loss values. Uh, for training and validation loss. And as you can see, the numbers get smaller the more you go down, uh, which means that we have an improved training and improved loss. And basically that's the, the learning, right? The training. And after we do the training, uh, of course, we uh, do a, we, we check out, we, we can look at the confusion matrix, something called the confusion matrix, right? The confusion matrix. It's basically how the, um, how the uh, the algorithm did, and if it found any 
uh, if it predicted something that was something else. So for example, if you look at the uh, first uh, square on the bottom left, you'll see that the uh, algorithm predicted a daisy, but the actuality was that it was a tulip, right? And then you can see uh, how many correct uh, are in the colored boxes uh, along the diagonal uh, line. So <clears throat> after we uh, look at how well our data did, um, we can uh, export the data uh, or the model, let's say. So the, the way that the flower identification works is that we exported a file called a, a pickle file. Uh, it's called export.pkl. And once that model is exported, then we can create a, uh, uh, an app that uses that file, that model, let's say, to uh, create the interface. So a pickle file, of course, you can find libraries to, to change it into, uh, or let's say, uh, change it into a different type of file for different frameworks, um, or you can use it with FastAI as well. So what I did, I used FastAI again to import it uh, and, you, and publish uh, the app on Heroku. So uh, the links that I have here, one is for Heroku, which is which will open up the uh, flower classifier. And the next link is the link to my GitHub repo for this, uh, for this project. Um, you can go there, explore the code. I have two Jupyter notebooks there. <clears throat> One is the published uh, uh, on Heroku, which is for displaying and using the model. And the other one is for the, the actual train. So you can go uh, get a hold of that and uh, do some uh, uh, training of your own on flowers. You can, uh, and, and the good thing about this or the amazing thing about this model is that it doesn't really have to be flowers. It can be dogs, it can be cars, it can be different, uh, uh, it can be anything really. Um, and of course the applications of this are, 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 are many. Uh, you can use, uh, it's used, used, for example, to identify uh, tumors in the medical sector. It can be used uh, in many other fields as well. But it's as, sim as simple as identifying, uh, identifying uh, training, sorry. It's as simple as training the model on what you needed to identify and, and then using that model. So um, uh, you can go to FastAI. That's where I got the, got the training from. Uh, and Kaggle is an amazing website. If you are interested as well, you can do a lot of, uh, uh, you can participate in com uh, ML competitions uh, online and get rewards. You can also uh, um, uh, learn uh, from the many, many shared and uh, notebooks by uh, thousands of people who are on, on Kaggle. So machine learning isn't, isn't only for specific people, uh, machine learning can be used and understanding machine learning, especially if you're a developer if, or if you're building awesome. systems and so on. Yes. You have one minute left. Great, thank you, perfect. Um, so uh, if, if you've ever been interested in machine learning, then the, what I advise you to do is to go out, to go, out go to these websites, go to, the, go to Kaggle, go to FastAI and others and explore AI and think about integ integrating it within your applications, within your systems, whether your personal projects, whether your clients or your uh, work, for example. Um, that's it for me. It's, uh, it's, uh, it was a very enjoyable experience uh, for myself. Um, I hope uh, you all found it uh, as fascinating as I did. And if you have any questions uh, or uh, comments, please feel free. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being here and uh, listening to my presentation. Thank you.